Hey guys, what's up? So today I'm gonna be doing something that I've actually never done before, and it's quite common for a lot of artists, but I personally have never done it. That's not how I operate. I'm going to be doing my eyes first. As you can tell, I've already drawn on my eyebrows so that we can speed up the process. I've already gone ahead and applied concealer and powder to my lids and to around my eyebrow area. Today I'm testing out a new concealer. It's the Rimmel Stay Matte Concealer and I'm using the color 120 Vanilla. It's a pretty spot on match for me. They also sent me the Stay Matte Foundation. I'm not sure this is my exact match. I might try it out if it doesn't work out then I'll just switch foundations. But why am I doing my eyes first? It's because I finally got my hands on this little baby. It is the Melt Blueprint stack. I haven't even opened it yet. Well that's partially true. I made them open it up at the store to make sure that none of the shadows were broken because you guys have probably heard that a lot of people have had problems with this stack. The eyeshadows are super brittle so they tend to shatter. So I made sure before I brought it home. And this is what it looks like. It's got a bunch of different, <laughs> that's that's the one I'm gonna be using today. It's got a bunch of different blues and then some warm browns and golds. I also kind of have to hurry up because I'm going out to dinner with my husband, so I'm gonna be moving a little bit quick today. And because these shadows are like super insanely pigmented, I am gonna go in with a transition shade first. I think I'm gonna go in with the cold shoulder color from the Creepy Cute palette. And this one's super pigmented too, but at least it gives me a nice little transition. So I'm only going to use a little bit of this and I'm going to start applying it to my crease area. The shape of the eye I'm doing today is going to be like the eyeshadow that I did for my rich bitch videos. So it's going to be very pointed. I know in those other two videos I didn't draw my eyebrows on, but I thought that with this look, I kind of I kind of wanted some eyebrows. So I'm just going in very lightly and adding that transition. And I'm only going to be doing blue on the top. I'm going to be doing the warm brows on my bottom lash. So I'm really just applying it to my entire crease and then extending it outwards. I know I'm kind of rushing and I don't think I actually explained why I'm doing my eyes first with this palette. Um, it's because these eyeshadows are crazy pigmented and I have seen a lot of people have a lot of fallout from them. Even though I typically don't have issues with fallout, even with a subculture palette, I'm usually really, really light-handed, but I just didn't want to risk it because I have to move kind of fast because as I said, I'm going out. So now I'm going to dip into Dim Out. This is this beautiful matte navy blue and it's the reason I bought this palette. I don't know, can you call this a palette? It's, it's a stack, but it's essentially a palette. It feels so weird having brows on with no skin on, but anyway. So I've grabbed a little bit of Dim Out and I'm going to apply this to my entire lid. I just want to do a really matte, really intense eyeshadow look today. Really dark too. I'm working that very slowly. I'm literally just tapping the eyeshadow once so that I can get it to look this light. You can see even with it, oh, there's the kickback. Ah, that's quite a lot of kickback, but it is so worth it. Like this shadow, it may not look like much now because I'm applying it very slowly, but I swear to God, I swatched it in the store. I just swiped it once and my finger was like, blue forever. It's crazy. And you might be wondering what store I'm talking about. It's Friends Beauty here in LA. They are, I think, the only physical store that sells Melt. And they are a pro store, so if you are a professional artist, you get a discount. Now I'm gonna go in with my Sigma Wide Shader Brush, and I love this brush for just packing eyeshadow onto the lid. Oh, I might go in with a base because I want this eye to be really dark and really intense. So I might go in with a cream base, actually. I thought I wasn't gonna need that, but I think I might. I think I just might. So I think I'm gonna go in with the Elf and J Kiss Aligner. It's a blue gel liner, and I'm just gonna run that close to my lash line and all over my lid. As you can see, it's almost the same color as the eyeshadow, but this is just gonna give the eyeshadow something to grip onto. And I know I should have done this before, but you can layer, it's not really an issue. And I kinda wanna blend that out because I don't want harsh edges when I layer my eyeshadow on top. And then I'm going to pack the eyeshadow and you can see that gives a nice boost to the color. So whenever you want to really intensify a color, I recommend 
applying a creamy base underneath that's similar to that eyeshadow color. See, this is what I was talking about with the harsh edges. I didn't blend enough. So I'm going to go back in with my pencil and then blend it out and then stack the eyeshadow. This blue is way more vibrant than I thought it would be. Or that might just be the lighter blue that really does brighten up the color a bit. But it is quite bright. I thought it would be darker. So I'm just gonna keep packing that shadow to get this shape that I really want. I'm not worrying about this too much. I'm gonna clean it up since I don't have foundation there. That's so weird. I usually have to be so precise with my application. But so far, no fallout. Oh, that's not true. A little bit of fallout, but way less than I thought I was going to have. But again, I am very light-handed, so you might have tons of fallout when using these eyeshadows. Okay, so I think I actually want to darken close to my lash line, so I'm going to go in with the Milk Makeup Gel Liner in the color Biz, and it's their navy blue liner. And I'm just going to run that really close to my lash line. And I'm going to blend it out a bit. And since this liner does have some shimmer to it, I'm going to pack some more eyeshadow on top. And you'll see that gets rid of the shine, but it's still a little bit darker. Gives the intensity that I was looking for. And that's the thing with eyeshadows. If something isn't as intense as you wanted it to be, just layer it over a cream and build that intensity up or like in my case, two creams, and you'll get there. Okay, now I'm just gonna clean up these edges and any fallout with some micellar water. I'm also gonna clean up this inner corner. And now I've got eyeshadow in my hair. Okay, now I finally get to do my face, and I'm gonna go in with the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. I've actually been using this in my day-to-day, -day, and I've been testing it out, and it's really interesting, and I'm still trying to figure out if I like it or how much I like it. Um, it is definitely hydrating and there is definitely a grip to it. It becomes kind of sticky, but not really. It's hard to explain. There's definitely a grip to it and they recommend leaving it for a minute so that your skin can absorb it and it can really reap the benefits of the grippiness because I guess your skin absorbs the hydration and then it's left with this kind of sticky not residue, but layer that really grips your makeup onto it. I'm not going to apply it to my forehead though because I am pretty oily there. I'm gonna stick to my Milk Makeup Blur Stick for that. So I'm just going to apply that on my forehead and my nose actually. Oh, I think I still have blue on my nose. God damn it. Hold on. Gotta get rid of that first. Man, it got on my forehead too because it got on the primer. God damn it, now my whole forehead's blue. Okay. Because I have to let this absorb for a minute, I'm going to apply some highlighter to my brow bone. And I'm going to go in with the shade Skylight. This is a really unique color. It's like a baby blue, but also not really. It's, I don't know, it's really unique. So I'm just applying that to my brow bone. Wow. That is very, very shimmery. Okay, it's gonna be, it's gonna be one of those days. All right, that's fine. Be careful not to get highlighter on your brows. That's, that's one thing that's a little bit tricky. If you do, just take your brow product and go over your brows again to get rid of that highlighter. As always, the first step to doing my skin is color correcting, so I'm gonna go in with the LA Girl Pro Conceal in the color yellow. And you guys have seen this a million times, so I'm not gonna dwell on it too much. I just apply color corrector to all my blemishes, and I prefer using yellow because it blends easier into the skin rather than using like a green, for example. I hate using green color corrector. And not pale yellow, just straight up yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and blend it out with my fingers by tapping. And I find that the makeup really does stick to the Hydro Grip primer. So I do like it. It's just really different from other primers that I have. That's why I said that I'm still trying to figure out if I like it. I do like it, but it's just so different. 
So now that I'm all color corrected, I'm going to go in with foundation and I'm going to try the Rimmel Stay Matte Foundation. This is the color 102 Light Buff. Don't think this is my exact shade, so I'm just going to test this out. I'm going to apply it with my fingers. It feels very like a thick, moussey consistency. Yeah, this looks a little too dark for me, but I can probably work with it. That has a really nice finish. Wow. It's matte, but it still looks like skin, which isn't that normal for matte, especially drugstore foundations. I always find they look pretty cakey, but this feels like almost a velvet finish. Oh, that's interesting. And the shade match, I think, is all right. It could be a touch lighter, but I can always fix that later if need be. I think it'll be all right. Going to a dark restaurant, it's fine. Wow, this legitimately looks like skin. I am super impressed. Like, what the... what? Like, am I... am I wrong in thinking this looks like I'm not wearing any foundation? I really hope this foundation wears well, because look at this. It's like, I'm flawless, and like, what? is happening. I, I don't even know. I don't even know. I really hope this foundation wears well. Wow. I am super impressed with this foundation. I was not expecting that at all. Okay, now for the concealer. Oh wait, I didn't apply any to the sides of my nose. I'm so used to wearing glasses that I automatically don't put foundation on the sides of my nose. But today I'm wearing contacts, so I need foundation there. Now for concealer, I'm using the Rimmel Stay Matte, and I'm just gonna apply that under my eyes. I think I need a little bit more coverage on a few little blemishes, but other than that, it seems pretty good. I think the foundation has more coverage than the concealer, which is a little bit weird. That's what it seems like to me. Like, I don't think I got much coverage from it. I'm gonna blend it out with a brush see if that helps at all what how did i get blue eyeshadow on my lower lash line excuse me sir who allowed you to be here okay so i think i like the foundation more than i do the concealer the concealer i think is like a self-setting concealer but i don't know i don't think it has that much coverage to it i think it kind of lifts up when you try to layer it which is a bit unfortunate. I'm gonna go in with a bit of my Milk Makeup Flex Concealer in the color Creme. I always like to add a little bit of that just to brighten up my under eye. Just a dot, as you can see. And then I'm gonna set it with the Milk Makeup Translucent Powder. I'm using the Omnia 265 brush for this. And actually, Royal and Langnickel is having a sale on their Omnia line on March 18th and they're doing a 20% off sale and if you use my code you can get an additional 10% off on top of that and honestly these brushes are some of the best I've ever used. I'm so impressed with them. It's their new pro line and they are so soft. I honestly thought they were natural bristle brushes but they're not. They're synthetic but they feel like natural bristle. It's crazy. So yeah, just thought I'd let you guys know about that little sale because sales are always fun. I'm also gonna powder around my nose, even though I don't really need to powder this matte foundation. My forehead a little bit. Now for my under eyes, I'm gonna be using the color Hammered and I'm gonna use a pencil brush to apply that really close to my lash line. I think that's actually the only matte color out of the browns. So I might have to go in with a different palette to blend this out. I'm gonna keep it within the Melt family and I'm going in with the Gemini palette. And I think I'm gonna take the shade Polka Dot or Lorelei. I'm gonna start with Polka Dot and then see what I think. These are really pigmented too, so you gotta be careful. I'm gonna take a bit of Lorelei. and blend that towards the outer corner. Go back in with polka dot. I really want a kind of big and bold lower lash line. I'm gonna take Luna, I think, to really help blend everything out. 
And I'm going to take some more Lorelei because I like that kind of pop of, it's almost a mustard. And then going back in with that first color and just really concentrating it close to the lash line. I'm also using that first color to kind of meet up with the blue so that there's less of a harsh seam right there. I am really digging this. I've never done like warm and cool on my eyes divided like this and I am really here for it. Now to finish off my eyeshadow, I'm gonna go in with Hot Wire, which is this bronze color and I'm gonna apply that to my inner corners. I just really wanna have the contrast between the blue and this color, but then it also ties in to the bottom lash line. Oh, I love that. I think I'm also gonna take Beaming, which is this lighter color here, and just apply that to the bottom of my inner corner. Oh my god, this is so pretty. They really nailed the colors in this stack. They complement each other really, really well. And I know that I just posted a video using blue and orange, and this color combo just works, man. It's complementary colors. Can't go wrong with those. That video was a totally different vibe. It was super cutesy. This is more badass and punky. If you haven't watched that one yet, I highly recommend it. It's very cute. Click up here to watch it. Okay, since the focus of this video is the eyes, I'm gonna go ahead and finish my face off camera and I'll be back to show you the finished look. And this is the finished look. I use the Melt Baked Eyeliner in my waterline, the Caution Mascara on my lashes, and I'm not going to put on fake lashes. I don't think this look needs it. It's so dark that you wouldn't really be able to see the lashes if I put them on. And I'm wearing Black Moon Cosmetics Grim on my lips. For my cheeks, I use like four different bronzers. I don't even know what I used. And then for highlighter, I used the Pat McGrath Trio. I used this bronze shade on my cheekbones and chin. And then on my nose, I used this middle one, which is a lighter yellow. So yeah, this is my kind of, this is giving me Mad Max vibes just because of the colors and also because it looks pretty badass. So I don't know. I don't know. Should I call this my Mad Max punk look? I don't, I don't know. You guys let me know down below what I should call it. I think these shadows are absolutely gorgeous. I'm definitely going to be doing more looks with them. I'm really happy I caved in and bought them. They are super pigmented. The fallout is there, but it is manageable. I think if you don't have any blue eyeshadows in your collection, this is a really good addition. And also warm bronzes and golds. I think it's a really unique little stack. And yeah, it packs quite a punch. So that's it for today, but I've got to run right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this. Thank you so much to all my patrons for supporting me, and I'll see you next time. Bye.